Good morning guys, it's Brie with Calafia Candle Company. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a studio vlog style video while I take you guys along with me as I finish up a wholesale order. So I just recently started accepting wholesale orders and I have one that I'm working on this week and uh, hopefully we'll get it sent out by Friday. So I figured I'd take you guys along with me as I do that. I do have these oval trays pretty much done and ready to be packaged up, but the customer did request some seashell trays as well. So I do need to finish making those. So we'll be heading into the garage to work on that. But I figured I would just share my wholesale experience with you guys so far far because it is new to me and some of you might find what I have to say helpful. So that's about it. Um, I hope you guys enjoy the video and let's go ahead and get started. So this is what we're going to be making this cute little seashell tray. It's perfect for jewelry or any other little trinkets. And the customer did request to have that rose gold in there, which I think just looks so pretty. So I do need to make a few more of those. Unfortunately, I just have one mold, so it is going to take me most of the day to get this done. Um, but I did purchase this mold off of Amazon, and I don't think I've mentioned yet in a YouTube video that I did create an Amazon storefront. So now instead of having a million Amazon links in the description box, everything is in one place and it's all categorized. So you can find this mold under the molds category. I did want to share with you guys really quick that occasionally you can get a bad bag of cement all. I've only had this happen to me one other time before, um, but it just happened again. So I have this container here, which I normally work out of, and I just pour the bags into there and scoop out of there. It's a lot easier. So I put a new bag in there and started to try and make jars. And I knew right away that something was off because it was just not mixing right and it was doing exactly what it had done to me before. It just is really, really thick. And even if you keep adding water, it just does not thin out at all. And then you also don't wanna add more water than you need because it's gonna weaken the vessel or the tray or whatever you're making. So I knew right away that that bag was bad. So I was like, oh, I'll open another one that I bought at the same time. I bought four bags at once. So I opened up this bag here, same thing. So those are no good. Um, I did go to Home Depot the other day and bought a new bag and luckily this one is totally fine and back to normal. Um, I don't think I'll be able to return this one obviously because it's not in the original packaging, but I'm gonna try to return this one and then the two other bags that I bought um, just cause yeah, I can't, I can't use it. I can't work with that. It was not good. So luckily this bag is back to normal and everything is performing like it should. So I'm gonna put my mask on now, so sorry if I sound a little bit muffled. But for this mold, I just work with my little scooper and I find I only need about like a third of a scoop. It's not a very big mold, so you don't need very much. So I'm just gonna empty that into my bowl. And then I am gonna add just a tiny bit of titanium dioxide to this just to lighten it up a little bit. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of that. I do get a lot of questions about titanium dioxide and I actually have a video on my channel about it if you're interested in checking that out. But it is an optional step. You do not need to add it. It's just a preference thing. So it helps to lighten the concrete. Um, so cement all naturally on its own kind of has more of a gray color. So if you want it to appear lighter and more white, you can add titanium dioxide. I do also like adding it when I add colored pigments. I just feel like it helps the color come through better. So again, just an optional step, but if you are interested in getting a lighter concrete color, then you might want to check it out. Okay, so I'm just making sure that's all mixed together. And then I'm gonna start adding my water in. And I actually have been weighing out my cement all and water for my candle jars. Um, I do still need to figure that out for these other molds. <laughs> so right now I just still am eyeballing that, but I have been liking weighing out everything for the candle jars because you do just end up with a lot less waste. So I am gonna be adding a little bit of the 
rose gold paint to this. So I wanna have it slightly thinner than I would normally do because when you add in that paint, it really thickens up the mixture. So this is looking good. Grab my paint, shake it up. And the key with the paint swirls, if you're going for that marble look, is not to mix it in very much. You wanna leave it pretty separated. So I'm just doing a few little swooshes with my spatula. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pour this into the mold. This mold is a little bit tricky. Um, it takes some time to pour in the mixture because it likes to settle on top and then slowly seep down into the sides. But there tends to be a lot of bubbles that form in here. So you kind of have to push them out. I'll show you what I mean when I get it a little bit more filled up. So I just kind of push down here. I don't know if you can see, but see how there's no mixture right here. So you kind of have to like finagle it and get the mixture to go down there. So I just kind of squeeze it, make sure all of those bubbles are coming out and make sure that the mixture is filling up everywhere. And then once it looks like it is everywhere, then I'll just top it off, give it a couple more taps and it's good to go. Okay, so now we just let that set until it no longer feels warm to the touch and that's how you know it's ready to unmold. So we will come back and do that when it's ready. I will show you guys how I clean up my bowls and my spatulas. I've had a couple questions about that recently. So I have this trash can that I just keep next to my workbench. And basically what I do is scrape out as much as I can with my spatula into the trash. And if you wanted to, you could use paper towels to kind of help wipe out everything too, but I just use my spatula. So after I've scraped out as much as I can into the trash, I just take this out in the backyard and hose it off into the dirt and that's it. So pretty easy cleanup. You never ever want to rinse out cement or concrete in a sink, not your kitchen sink, not your bathroom sink, not a garage sink. It will harden in your pipes and that is just a disaster you want to avoid. So that is what I do. I hope that is helpful to you. So I pre-cut some of my Ram Pack bubble wrap and I'm just gonna wrap these trays individually and then put them into this box I have over here. I put a nice layer of packing peanuts on the bottom of the box. There's some nice cushion. So I have my first layer of trays in the box and then I'll put another layer of peanuts and then another layer of trays and so on. So I think the thing that was holding me back from ever doing wholesale this whole time was myself. <laughs> I don't know why, I just was like scared to jump in and start doing it. I kept telling myself I wasn't ready for that yet. And Finally, I decided to just do it and I'm really glad I did because it's been going really well so far. I didn't really know much about wholesale. Um, I mean, I guess my Madewell stuff is considered wholesale, but that was about all I had done. So in terms of offering it through my shop, I wasn't really sure how to go about doing that. So I did a lot of research online and trying to see, you know, like what terms and conditions I should set and things like that. And then even when I was making my brochure, I was researching online examples of wholesale brochures like on Etsy and things like that. So that was helpful. The Facebook groups were really helpful too when I was trying to set my 
terms and conditions for wholesale just to kind of see what other people were doing and and take advice from them so i would if you're unsure about wholesale like i was i would definitely recommend looking in the facebook groups and looking online and doing your research a couple things i'll share that i'm doing that i think are working pretty well is requiring a 50 percent deposit up front before i even start making the items that way i'm not spending all of this time making these items for this person and then have them end up ghosting me and then i just did all that work for nothing so i require that 50 percent deposit up front or they could pay in full if they want to um, and then the remaining balance i send to them once i have everything packaged up and the boxes weighed out so i can calculate shipping because you don't really know how much shipping is going to be until you get everything packaged up so i have that as to be determined and then once i have everything packaged up i include the shipping and the remaining balance and send that to them and collect that payment before i ship out the items so again in case for whatever reason they don't pay that remaining balance i didn't already send the items out to them another important thing to think about is your pricing so a lot of people say to do cost of goods times two for wholesale and cost of goods times four for retail. I don't really follow that method though because I feel like that doesn't factor in my labor enough, especially with the candle jars being handmade and everything that takes a lot of time. So I do half of my retail cost for wholesale and that's been working out. I was hoping I would be able to get all of these in one box and I think I'll be able to, so that is good. I'll put the tray, or I mean the trays, <laughs> the seashell trays probably in a different box unless I can fit them in here, but I think it might be kind of tight. I tried to not have them touching against each other and definitely not touching the sides of the box as well because that is how you'll end up with things breaking if the delivery service throws them or something and this is touching the side of the box it has a better chance to break so i try to leave enough space around the sides and the middle um, for peanuts to make sure that they're really cushioned in there i had a wholesale order with trays a few weeks ago and that was the first time i was sending out that many trays in one box so i was kind of nervous about the condition they would arrive in just because they are kind of delicate even though they're made out of concrete they will break if they're dropped or anything like that so i was hoping that they would arrive in one piece and they did which was really good all right so the oval trays are all packaged up and i might be able to fit the shell trays in here as well i'll have to kind of see when those are done and I get to packaging them. I wanna make sure I have enough room on top for another layer of packing peanuts to make sure that these are really protected. Um, so we'll see, I guess, when those shell trays are done. Okay, our tray is ready to unmold. So I just kind of pinch a little bit of the mold and then start to peel it back. And then this bottom piece just slides out and there we have it and it will lighten up as it dries so it will become more of this color right here so it's the next day and i have the shell trays all done and they're sealed and labeled so now i'm just going to package them up and add them into our box is boxed up and ready to go I did just send the remaining balance to the customer so as soon as I receive that payment I'll go ahead and purchase the shipping label and drop this off at UPS so that is it now I'm gonna get to work on another wholesale order 
and also prepping for my Madewell pop-up this weekend, which if you're local to the Orange County, California area, I will be at the Madewell at the Mission Viejo Mall from 12 to 4 on Saturday. So come check it out if you're local. And that's about it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Feel free to give it a thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.